<laughs> By now, you probably know that I'm quite a proponent of prefabs and using them in your maps. And today I'm going to show you just how easy it's going to be to fill up your rooms with assets when you have a bunch of prefabs already to go. Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Vic Fairytale and today I am going to fill up this specific room that we're looking at right here with a bunch of my uh, of my prefabs. I've made these prefabs quite a while back in the past and I know they were specifically suited for this kind of uh, this kind of room which is going to be a sort of barracks. It's part of a map that I'm working on in the Let's Recreate the Sewers video where we by now at this point slowly uh, one by one fill up the rooms with interesting things and then I would like to compare it to the end result which is the top photo battle map in the Dungeon Draft subreddit. But for now, I would like to focus on this room specifically. And if you're interested in seeing the progress over the other areas and hallways, please go check out the video series. I'll make sure there is a card in the top right corner of this video right now. Now, I might be cheating a little bit because I know that my prefabs are specifically well suited to address this room, but it's also going to give you an excellent impression of, of what the prefabs could do for you when you have a few that you've already created. And it's something that I sat down for a month or so back uh, where I specifically designed a few different types of prefabs that I can use in these kinds of situations to make my life easier. And we're going to use all of those today and we'll then finish it up with some additional assets here and there. And as per usual, I'm going to say this is going to be a shorter video, but by now I know that I often overshoot my time. So uh, let's see where this is going to end up. Now, now, without further ado, we're going to dive into the bunk beds. And not only bunk beds, I also have some regular beds that we can use. But we'll start off with the bunk beds. And I want to have them uh, all the way at the top here. And I'm going to use these assets as they are intended. Um, I actually talked about this with uh, the folks from Forgotten Adventures once. Uh, they are very much not made to be placed like below a wall. Um, so we're just going to grab a few different kinds of prefabs that we have, uh, have done. Uh, and then we'll just place those all around here. And um, I might make some alterations to these in a little bit because I don't think I want to have the backpacks everywhere. But let's see where we end up. And now I would want to add in some bed, but I think we can't really turn the prefab, so we have to do that in a second. These are just regular beds. We'll place them on the right hand side, maybe two. Um, and I think that would be fine for the barracks because in that way we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight places uh, for thieves to uh, lay low and sleep a little bit. And I think that is sufficient to bring across the message that I want to send with this room. And we're also going to have to look into the colors because now they're quite brightly colored. Um, and I'm not sure if that's what I want. So let's see if we can just grab this whole thing, turn it around. And we'll place that over here. We can add some side tables there as well. We'll grab that. There we go. Turn that sideways. Place that against the wall over here. And I think they're slightly off on their angle. So we'll just turn it. Yeah, make sure that that looks good. Now that we have that out of the way, we're going to go to the prefabs again and we're going to switch um, to my tables and I think I want something that they can plan at. I had that initial prefab at first I think I like that a lot. Um, there's also supposed to be a side table here somewhere and I think that will look very nicely done there and then we have a planning table that we can put up right here and I think then we can proceed to some separate items, some separate assets. So like some boxes that we can place. And I wanted to use this crevice that we have over here um, to place some boxes specifically. And then we're just going to darken the whole thing out quite a lot uh, with shadows because it's, it's just generally quite a dark corner. Um, and I think that'll look better in the end. And now we have some different colors of wood. So I also want the... Yes, the ashen wood. And we'll place that on top of layer one and make that a slightly bit bigger. Now that's fine. We'll move the chest that's below there over a little bit. Make this one a bit smaller. 
and then we'll place that on layer two and we'll place the one next to that layer two as well. There we are. And in case you've uh, missed my previous video on modding, I have some mods installed here that we can use, uh, especially when you have the, the select tool. It's a layers mod that just shows you all the different kinds of assets that you have on a specific layer. It still requires some work, but it's an excellent tool in progress. And I can actually use that um, quite a bit already, especially for example, if you look at the below, uh, the below water um, assets. And I think if we zoom out, yeah, you can see some support metal beams that we used here. So specifically, if I wanted to select the things here, um, you can just select them in your, your uh, layers panel on the right hand side. And I highly recommend checking this out. I do believe I moved it over a bit. Yes, I did. I highly recommend checking out my previous video where I address all these things uh, because you're definitely going to be interested in that. I think it's an awesome feature. Now, back up here, I think we're going to have to address the colors that we want. And um, I think I'm going to go for colors that are not as bright. If we look over here, we do have a few bright details, but I don't want it to be too much. Um, and I want a bit more variety. So we're going to select this. We're going to... Hey, good you not? There we are. We're going to select this. I'm going to separate it. And um, we'll do the same thing with the right one over here. We'll separate that as well. Quickly switch between tools so that we can select the bed and um, make it a different tone. And this one is just going to be kind of faint brownish red, I think. I prefer to go for red. Um, like so and then the green one stands out a bit too much to my taste so i want to change that to a different color as well we'll separate it again switch between tools we're going to grab that and i think i'm going to keep it green but i want to have it a darker shade of green there we are and i do think these are very pleasant colors to look at so we're going to keep it like uh, like this and we're definitely going to need some end tables as well so we'll grab ourselves a few tables and I always found these specific ones to work, and uh, there they are, to work very well as end tables. Make sure that we place it on uh, the right scale. And I think we're going to need it to be a bit higher up because it's going to have to go below the bottom bunk bed. And that's only one or two, I believe. So I want half a table, like so. We'll place that over here. And let's see if we can grab one that's a bit wider. Uh, but maybe we can make it smaller and then I'm going to attach them um, Yeah, three planks works and For the ones over here. We're just going to use some stools. I Mean the thieves guilds not that rich, uh, so they won't be Having all these luxury items um, That works, let's say put in layer one for here um, and do we want another stool? Yeah, maybe. I will take one without the wood lining. Place that over here. We'll use that as some sort of end tables. And then we want some buckets in here as well. Because even though we are in the sewers, I can imagine that they don't want to do their business um, just straight into the sewers. So we'll place those beneath... Um, beneath the end table and maybe just one sort of below bed uh, which would mean it's just a very flat bucket over here have a hint of it showing on another one as well and when i look at it i do think we may have just a that too many different colors here so i'm going to copy the hex code for this one over here we'll accept and and we'll change up the green one for the red one just to make it a bit more uniform we don't have to have because we already have quite a few different sorts of wood in here as well um so we're going to need some lanterns on the walls and maybe a candelabra as well um let's start with the lantern and we can place them on the end tables as well because that's where they would make sense to be the current light sources are not related to any uh, any light we just need some bright light in here because otherwise i won't be able to see anything um we can have one lantern 
mounted to the wall uh, above the table seems like a sensible place to put that and I see we also have some light that we could use for that if we want to I believe these are from uh, White Fox Works assets, but they could be matched with the... Uh, yeah, they are. With uh, the Forgotten Adventure assets as well. Might be a very nice detail to add in later. I'm not going to do that now, however, because I want this map to be used for virtual tabletop as well. And I'm going to add some basic shadowing, but not uh, directional shadows based on light. Uh, we'll do that in a separate video somewhere at the end of the series. Um, and I think it would be wise to add in another lantern on the pole over here. The pillar that's carrying everything will just tie a rope, tie a rope around it, um, and we'll point that into this direction, and maybe just some candles as well for people who want to read at night. Um, I think that one's slightly too big. Uh, jab one. We don't want to have that on layer four either. So. Let's see, three should be fine, right? Yeah. Okay, and uh, now I want something against the wall, maybe a bookcase or something like that. Get on it. There we have some excellent cupboards, and I think I want a cupboard that's quite simple, um, like this one, but a different color, and. We'll just place that all the way over here. So there should be sufficient space for somebody to move through. Um, and that's not in the way either. And we can add some minor clutter on there. Um, and then I want to add in a rug as well. Just to break up the floor a little bit. And I do see that we still need to place down some textures there as well, but we'll do that at the end. Uh, some additional patterns. So I want to keep this real simple here and we don't want to have something that's very decorated. Uh, that brown color works really well. We'll make sure that this is sort of brown as well. Um, And we'll have that on layer one. And I often like to make these rugs a tiny bit translucent so that you can slightly see the floor pattern around it, uh, through it, because it gives some sort of a sense that the rug has been laying there for a very, very, very long time um, and has settled in the crevices of the wood as well. Um, and I, I, I don't know, for some reason, it makes it look uh, that much more, that more realistic. I want to have another rug though. I don't want to use the same one twice. And we'll take a very grayish shade of blue for this one. So we have like the same color coming through. Um, which we have on the top, and then we also have that on the bottom. And place that at the slight offsets. That would make more sense to do that for the length, actually. And then we skedaddle this one over to the other side. And that already kind of fills up the room, and then we're going to quickly add in those patterns that I was talking about and we'll use the wet mud puddle overlays to create some stains on the floor um, if we make them slightly red I think we can use them as stains on on the carpets as well Let's turn off the grid for a moment. And we're going to just edit, take the edit points and we'll spread out the lines here. Check 
what the flow is of the pattern behind it or below it and we'll just cut out some sections see if we can make a plausible stain I think that works quite well so we'll leave that in there and we're just going to go back to just a slight discoloration on the floors that one's too much And we have to do it on layer one, of course. There we are. And then I want to just grab the, the wood gradient, some kind of damage with a damaged planks and some other kind of texture that looks really nice on the wooden floor. There we are. I'm going to grab a light one for the entire room because it's quite a room that's used frequently. And we'll grab the custom shape tool. Make it a custom shape. And then we need some specific areas that maybe have more broken planks in there or bigger holes and move that through the room. That's too big. And I just trying to find the really nicely placed um, cracks in the floor to use that. Um, and make sure that they align with the rest of the room well and then I want some sideways um, what do you actually call it scratches as well uh, near the doors well that can actually work quite well we'll just make some scratches in the floors closer to the doors make sure that it's obvious that they're a bit more damaged over there and maybe we can have a, feeling, a bit of bad luck with the rotation oh well we'll make do with it for now because it seems that the rotation isn't really working right now okay and i think with that we could actually already call the room finished more or less uh, we have some basic shading for most of it already we don't only need to do the sides of the rooms and um and if I look at the timer, I think this took, well, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, which is actually rather fast for a map if you consider the amount of details that are in specific areas. And I think this is an excellent showcase of what the prefabs can do. Now, the next part of the video will be uh, more on the detailing here. So I'll be casually going through that. So if the prefabs is the thing that you've come for, uh, you can always skip to the end. However, if you do want to stick around for a little while longer, uh, please feel free to do so. Now we have the basic assets in here. So I first want to create some atmosphere in the room and I'm going to add some shadows along the walls for that. And then after that's finished, I'm going to see what everything looks like. And if we want to consider adding some more assets, maybe here and there, um, maybe something that's on the bed right now could be on the bedside right there. Or well, the first thing that comes to mind, however, is maybe a cup. And we can put that over there as well. So we're just going to clutter up a little bit more than we've already done and I've placed that way too high did I yeah I did so back to cups and let's get something quite rusty uh, and maybe one that's toppled over as well because somebody wasn't paying attention and I want that to be not a too pretty one because these are all engraved. Though they do look rusty. This one's fine, I guess. And let's grab some empty ones over here. And maybe a picture. An empty one uh, on the side. And then let's grab a... Well, it's something a pitcher with water and a cup again here as well and this time I'm going to grab the 
wood ones. There we are. I'll give this one water. And one of that bed. And, and let's add in a book, not just a paper. That would be something to probably be reading a lot and place that over there. And we'll have a set of papers laying just somewhere in the corner, maybe a few packs, as if um, maybe one of them pretends to be a beggar when they uh, pickpocket people on the streets upstairs, just pretends to be handing out newspapers. So we can add in a few packs. Let's see if we have the darker colored ones. I like those. Um, we'll stack these up against the wall here. So we'll turn it around, make sure that it's not too obvious that it's the same acid. And then um, place something on top. I actually want this to be two, layer two. I'm going to be below for now. We'll just turn it around a little bit. We'll grab the other acids over here and shove them back to layer one. Come on, come on. Yep. And then maybe a loose paper on top and a crumbled up one. And we'll take the lighter color for this one specifically and something crumbled up here in the corner. And then let's see if we can find something between the White Fox Works assets over here. We'll just grab some clothing, some shoes. Let's see if there's something suitable for a burglar. Yeah, we'll shove that below there. And we can just grab another set of shoes as well. Something colorable that will work. Always and not too fancy. We'll just place those somewhat in the corner below the bed. We'll have part of a burnt scroll over here. Something that somebody maybe have stolen from somebody else, tried to read it, or it just got burned in the process, or it's just a treasure map of sorts. And um, a little wooden cross also works perfectly fine. Uh, and I think, last but not least, let's add in a helmet somewhere, maybe. And we're going to need to add some shadow to that later as well, um, to make sure that it blends in with the rest. But um, let's let's cut it with the clutter for now. We're going to uh, switch to this shadow path. Um, get ourselves some great shadows going. Okay, we're going to place this on layer 4, and I'm just going to follow around the edges... Make sure we blend everything in here. And I do think I actually might want to have this a little bit bigger. Let's actually... So let's put that on layer uh, layer 4 and 1.25. I think we can go up to 140. Yeah, should work. And I grabbed a lighter shade uh, because this one's actually uh 40 percent as opposed to the previous the previous one that i just grabbed which was 60 uh, percent so let's follow that there's a bit of artifacting we don't want that um so let's make sure that we take that out um there we are and then with the basic shadow in there i think i want to add in a very thin line more along the edge and we shouldn't place it the other way around to make sure it's slightly darker amongst the edge of the walls
There we are. Okay. And then we want to do the same thing, but we want to outline this over here. I think this might be a bit too big. Uh, so we'll put it on 0 0.2. There we are. And I'll make it a fade in, fade out. We grab the 40%. I think will work fine for the pillar in the middle. We just want to make sure it stands out from the, the wood that's around it. There we are. Maybe needs a bit more shading. There we are. Awesome. And I'm going to outline um, some of the some of the separate assets that we've placed down as well uh, to pull them away from the floor. I'm going to do that quickly and fast forward. And now, last but not least, um, we're going to add in some stains. And I'm going to grab them from somewhere else where I've used them already. I think this will work just fine. Copy paste it in here. Oh, come on. Because for some reason I was unable to find them lately. Um, so we'll place those a few throughout the room. And we can do a bunch of different ones. Um, and just spread them wherever. Just to make sure that it looks like it's a very lived room. That's been used for, I'll say, let's, quite a while. So we'll place everything on layer 1. And we'll slap that in there, maybe around the back, back and the staircase. And we'll turn one around, around the pillar as well. And let's grab ourselves another one. We can scale that up. Take the alpha value down even further. And place it on layer one. Shirts to the front, we can include the rugs and carpets as well. I'll bring them to the back, make sure that's below. Select that stain again and turn it around some more. The different angle, make it quite a bit bigger, and use that along the edges of the walls. If you turn that around, it's quite hard to actually spot that it's the same, um, the same asset you're reusing. I want this one to be coming a bit further out, as if a lot of people walked there. 
and we're going to need some footsteps in here as well uh, just going places from left to right i think i do also need to change up this specific uh, pattern but i think that might be a very hard one to find but let's see if we can do that with um with the mod that we have and it's supposedly on layer two and um it was a not a grout but it was the wet mud so let's see if we can go to the w wet mud oh, wet mud petals overlay and now we're just gonna click through oh there we have it and then we're going to change up the alpha value and make sure that's somewhat turned down i think that's better and that's where this mod specifically shines um this is helping a lot because otherwise you'd have to move all the assets around in order to select the pattern uh, which can be quite hard um now we're going back to blood find the footsteps that we like Make sure that they're on the proper scale. One is all right. And we'll turn down the alpha value quite a lot. And that maybe have been a tad too much. And we can just, you know, place those through the room. Make sure they go back and forth everywhere from all sides. No, anything that makes, that makes sense. And that's quite in line with the other rooms that we have. It's a bit better visible um, on the on the wooden floor, but I think that's perfectly fine. Looks nice and messy, uh, and I like it a lot. I think I'm going to call it quits for the video for now, because otherwise we'd be running long uh, again, and that's not what we want, right? So this is what prefabs can do for you. The initial layout goes really fast, but the detailing is something that just takes a bit of time. And that's something that you can scale up depending on what you want to do with your map. If you want to sell it or put it on a Patreon, which is going to require some more time, that's just the way it is. Uh, but if you're doing this for your table and just for your friends, you know, you don't really have to do all this detailing. You could actually already call the map finished after you've placed on all the prefabs. So it depends a bit on what you want, um, but you can go from uh, uh, filling up a room from 10 to 50 minutes uh, to taking what uh, 25 to 30 minutes and and have everything done um, except for the directional lighting which is still going to require some lights and shadow work uh, and you could go even further into detail which i've done a few times before while you add the highlights as well uh, but it's all depending on your taste so if you've enjoyed the video please hit that like favorite and subscribe button because it really helps to get my videos out there and it helps the algorithm recommend my videos to well people like you that also watch the video and uh, find it useful. So if you're willing to consider that, it really helps me out personally. Uh, it's a great motivator for me as well. Um, like I mentioned in a community post, I might be a bit inconsistent with the videos from uh, from this week's onwards uh, till the end of May because I'm going on a holiday as well as uh, following an education next to my work uh, where I'm, well, I'm learning to code as a full stack developer. Uh, which I think is really cool, but just requires a lot of time and practice as well. Uh, and I just don't have the time to keep dishing out uh, new videos every week, but I'll try to keep uh, some sort of flow going, uh, releasing new videos uh, at least every other week um, or something like that, which is, to be honest, a bit of a bummer, but it's just the way it is. Uh, I can't really split myself in two. And after the holiday in May, I'm actually moving to a new house that I bought. So... Uh, which again is going to take me a bit of time to uh, to get everything over and do some uh, do some chores around the house. Uh, after that, I hope to pick up a regular schedule again where we can just dish out a video every week and uh, keep making maps. So rest assured, I'm not going to be gone for a long time. Uh, it's just for uh, it's just temporary, and we'll do our best to pick everything up as usual when we can. Now, if you want to support me in the meanwhile and you want to do something extra, you can always go check out my Patreon page. It's linked in the description of this video. 
I have a few rewards for my patrons like maps that I've made in the past, special additions to those or additional versions of them, as well as some tokens a friend of mine made, which are character portraits. Um, so if you like that and you're interested, please go check that out. Feel free to do so. But in any case, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.